Hi, this is Tom. I'm back in the library again, and uh, two things are true. One is I can't get a haircut in this time of social isolation, and the other one is I'm spending so much time crouched over the computer that my neck is taking the heat, so I thought I would share my self-help piece with the neck. So the first thing is, is that the outer cylinder, the outer fascial cylinder of the neck is the trapezius and sternocleidomastoid combined. So put your knuckles along your sternocleidomastoid, but take a great big use this whole surface of this proximal phalanx bones of your knuckles, but not digging in with your knuckles, but kind of peel yourself like a kiwi around to the back at the same time that you're turning away from it. Yeah, get the idea? Put your fist up against, don't go front of the sternocleidomastoid, that's uh, delicate territory. But if you put your hand on the sternocleidomastoid and peel your fascia of your superficial cylinder, you're gonna get glide and release between that and the cylinders underneath, the visceral cylinder and the motor cylinder. But we're going to leave the visceral cylinder alone today and go for that motor cylinder. So once you've done this, you can also go up to the top of the sternocleidomastoid and uh, getting under the mastoid process or along the mastoid process, lift that tissue up. This should burn a little bit um, if you're really doing yourself some good in here and you're going behind your ear all the way to the top of where your ear is attached. If you get to your hair, it might pull a little bit, too bad, um, but you're trying to get all the way up to here to the asterion where your parietal and temporal and occipital bone meet. That's a great thing to do there. And then you can go under the mastoid process with a nice strong finger on both sides, coming in and under as if you were trying to squeeze the toothpaste out of the tube toward the nuchal ligament at the midline. You can do that more than once. You can do this more than once. I'm only going to do it once because we're now going to go into the motor cylinder. So take your thumb and pull your sternocleidomastoid forward with your thumb and press your thumb in underneath. Ah, you're saying that feels nervy. Yes, this is an endangerment site, but what's the other side of danger? Excitement. So it's an excitement site. So let's go in and not get too excited. Uh, if you feel the nervy bit, that's the brachial plexus. Drop in front of that with your thumb to pick up the really strong cable. Can you feel it? Of your anterior scalene. If you can feel the anterior scalene, you'll feel it on the in-breath. So take, I feel it talking right now, moving. But if you uh, take a nice deep in-breath, you'll feel that anterior, oh yes, I'm on the anterior scalene. If it's sending pain down your arm, then lighten up. You're drawing in the fascia of the brachial plexus. You can turn your neck as you go up. The scalene goes up and a little bit back and a little bit in. So finding it, it's a big strong steel cable right in front of the nerves. Just avoid the nerves, avoid the nervy pain, but get in front of that and go up and in and back a little bit. If you really go all the way to the end, you will get to the transverse processes and you'll feel them like little bumps in there if your tissue is open. Now, don't press on the nerves, go behind the nerves and get the one behind the nerve. I'm using my thumb and I am dropping my elbow so I can get a good bit of force up my lateral scalenes toward, again, towards the mastoid process, but it's I'm going on to the transverse processes underneath those come around even more to the back from there, you will pick up, of course the trapezius is in the way, but if you get under there, you will feel the levator scapulae. Can you take your thumb right up your neck all the way to the top? Obviously, don't do this, especially if you're doing it as deeply as I'm doing it right now, because I really am just so tired of my neck being hyperextended and in this frightened position. So let's get that anterior scalene. After you get the sternocleidomastoid, the anterior scalene is where that <gasps> kind of breath gets stored. Um, very, very often that feeling of gasping. And you can get that with the anterior scalene, which I can follow really right up to C3. Whoops, miss the nerves, catch that middle one. And I just use my hand on my chest or whatever, but I'm holding my 
hand out of the way so you can just see my thumb going straight up the middle of the scalene. Next one back is the, why is my collar in the way? God knows, I'm just doing this thing off the cuff. Um, up the posterior scalene, and then one more back for the levator scapulae. Can you miss the levator scapulae? No, it's right there, you got it. And just try to follow that up towards the transverse processes as well. Okay, from then we're going on to the back and you can feel those cables and all that stuff. So using your fingertips or your thumb tips, whichever works for your hands, we're going up those cables towards the back as you drop your chin into your chest. I'm probably dropping the voice into the microphone, but too bad. Really make it longer. So getting in behind all that hard stuff that we just did with the scalenes and getting the erector spinae to come down and looking down. You can even go into a roll down on this. I'm probably now going right out of the picture. Can you read the titles in my library? <laughs> I ought to do a tour of my library sometime. Okay, last piece though, very important. In the times of eye fixation on the computer, in the times of fear, a big place that this gets lodged is right under your skull and back. The oculomotor reflex and all these little muscles of the suboccipitals back here. My thumbs are nearly touching behind. <laughs> Can you even see me through my... I promise I'm not going to be that guy with the long gray ponytail, but my hair is growing. Um, can you uh, get your thumbs almost together and can you get your thumbs under your skull? That's the most important. Put your fingers on your skull so your skull doesn't move. And then move your eyes around and you'll feel that your neck is, your, those muscles at the top of your neck are responding to the movements of your eyes. But now you can close your eyes and just start to go in. Here I'm right close to the midline. Here I'm a little bit out from the midline. Here I'm out at the edge of the shelf. If I went any farther, I'd get on to the mastoid process, the big old bone out here on the side. So these suboccipital muscles are between the midline and the mastoid process, but they're under the skull. How far can you insinuate, sneak, slide, waterway around your fingers so that they're under the skull? Now, if you now do a forward bend, you will feel that you tighten up the superficial layers and you can't get into the deep layers. In a way, you could do this on a pillow or something like that where you lie down and your head is supported and go in under the, and really press in under the skull and see if you can get those muscles to relax. I don't, how, you don't need to watch me doing this. You need to do it. The suboccipital muscles are so effective at helping the whole back line to relax, that whole back line that is in the fight or flight uh, response or a big part of it. Anyway, hope that's helpful. Take care, see you next time.